Hello everyone. I'm so sorry we were having a lot of technical issues with the last link which is why I'm having to start a whole new live session on a new link and um, I hope you're able to see this. Your uh, instructors will be sending you the link very soon. Again, I'm so sorry about this. And um, in case you miss seeing this particular live session, know that it's going to be recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel. So I'm just checking if we are actually live. Just a moment. All right. So we are live right now. So hello, hello everyone. Hi, Anshita. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for all the inconvenience. Hi, Arav. Hi, Sachi. Um, welcome. Hi, hi. Okay, I'm so glad to have you here. Hi, Tanvi. Hi, Fahad Hafiz. Hi, hi, Creative Krisha. Hi, Sachi, Ritisha, and Dhruv. Um, there was a bit of a skirmish I noticed. Um, in the comments of the previous live session, I could read all your comments. In fact, I did put down a comment um, asking you to have patience. So thank you so much for your interminable patience. And let's get started with this live session. I hope you like this new format that we have here for you. Hey, Divyanshi. Hi, Atul. Hi, Anahita. And um, I would especially like to thank Jaivir and Aryan Malhotra because they were calming everyone down and... Um, I believe Jerry told everyone that it's my first live session on YouTube and we are having some technical issues, which is precisely what it was. And um, thank you so much, Jerry and Aryan, for being in our corner. Hi, Shlok. Hi, Anam. Uh, hey, Anaya. Hi, Ahna. Welcome. Um, Anshika. Hi. Hi, Viana. Tanvi. Um, it's, it's, it's so nice to have you with us. And um, again, please accept my apologies. Sachi, I already addressed you, sweetie. All right, so let's begin. Um, hey, Tiana. Um, Shlok, what are you talking about? I, I don't know about that. Hi, hi, Tiana. Tick Tacky 13 Plays, that's your name. I believe that's your Roblox name. Hey, hey, Swara, welcome. SSK's Creative Corner. Really creative names here, all of you have. Um, hi, Shweta Kiswani. Put down your name. Hi, hi, Shachi. Hi, welcome. Hi, Kavish. Um, hi, Javir. I was just thanking you. Thanking, th I was thanking you. So thank you so much. Thank you and Aryan both. Okay, so let's begin. Um, really, Shlok? I I need to go look at look this up. I di I didn't see this at all. Hi, Chandan. Hi, Divyanka and Kaira. Hi, Kavya. All right, so let's begin. Today's uh, story, today's humorous tale is called Dinner Delight. All right, it's Dinner Delight. All right, we have Ananya Kanodia. Hi, hi, Nandini. Um, we have Amina. All right, so uh, Shlok. Hi, Shlok. So uh, Shlok, I hope you're enjoying this new YouTube live format. And um, yes, so Swaggy Olivia is Amina. All right, I'm going to remember that. Two directioners is Kenisha. I'm going to have some trouble so, uh, with your with remembering your name. So don't get offended if I don't. So happy Valentine's Day to you too, Sarah. Okay, we'll begin. So today's story, like I told you, is called Dinner Delight. So my volunteers, my trusty volunteers, please put the name down, the name of the story down in case some children are entering this live a tad late thanks to our technical issues. So yes, it's Friday. Sammy Troy complained. Fish and chip day. Why are we having shepherd's pie? So children, um, a, a bit of a, uh, something I wanted to tell you is that please arm yourself with a snack because this story might make you feel a dad hungry. All right. So yes, so Sammy Troy is one of the the characters in today's story and he's complaining because at school they have received shepherd's pie as opposed to fish and chips so he was expecting this this is what he wanted to gorge on but what he got instead was this so this is shepherd's pie shepherd's pie is basically minced meat and vegetables and there is a layer of mashed potatoes on top and he prefers fish and chips who doesn't like chips 
All right. So, I don't know, said Jane, his older twin. So, he has a twin, Jane. And Jane is older than him by about 10 minutes. And Jane spent half her time at school keeping Sammy out of trouble. She swallowed a forkful of the pie. It's quite palatable anyway. Try it. So Jane seems to be the most sensible, prudent, sagacious little child. And um, she is keep she generally keeps her mischief maker brother, her troublemaker brother, um, you know, out of trouble in school. And uh, yes, so she's telling him, look, stop whining, stop complaining, stop protesting and just have a bite. Sammy tried it. It was indeed palatable. So he said, yes, Jane, you're right. It is indeed palatable, but he wasn't going to admit it. So he was this sort of stubborn, obdurate, obstinate little boy. Now, we taught you another word for um, obstinate. You know, someone who is very determined to do what they want to do without listening to others. So Sammy was just like that, right? And put down that word in the comments. You just learned it in the most recent masterclass. This word, which means very determined to do whatever you want to do and you don't listen to others. All right, just quickly going to um, address some of you. Hi, Disha Divya. Hi. All right. Uh, Rashmi C. Hello. Welcome. All right. So there's a word that you learned in the Disney Masterclass. Put it down in the comments. I'm reading. So um, now he'd been looking forward to fish and chips, Sammy. And Shepherd's pie just wasn't the same. He pulled, his, he pulled a face. He did that. So he produced a facial expression which showed dislike. So he he grimaced. He scowled. Ugh. Pig food. He said this looks like pig food. He was being mean deliberately. Okay. So I've gotten the comments. Uh, Kavya Rajendran. Perfect. Headstrong. Mr. Great. I believe that shlok. Headstrong. Anuradha Bhavalva. Headstrong. The word I'm looking for is headstrong. So if you put down the word headstrong, you are absolutely right. Okay, so the word is headstrong. So Sammy is a headstrong fellow. He pulled away. He said, I don't want to eat the shepherd's pie. So Jane said, don't be silly, said Jane. But she knew he would be. He would behave like a fool. She said, don't be silly. But she knew he would behave in a silly fashion. So she's she knew her brother is an imbecile. He is a half-wit. And um, one of my favorite words of all time, nincompoop. Her brother Sammy is a nincompoop. Right? He's a dimwit. So, yes, Sammy left most of his dinner. So he really didn't want to have shepherd's pie. So he left it. And in the playground afterwards, he made up a wrap. All right. So he was making this, this little poem and he was wrapping it out. It was about the school cook and it went like this. So their school had a cook and he made a wrap about her, which went like this. Elsie Brooke is a useless cook. If you eat school dinners, it's your hard luck. They either kill or make you ill. If the meat don't do it, then the custard will. So it's quite a mean rhyme. I'm going to show you what it says. Elsie Brook is the name of the cook. So he goes, Elsie Brook is a useless cook. If you eat school dinners, it's your hard luck. They either kill or they make you ill. If the meat don't do it, then the custard will. Adhya Zavar. Sweetie, nothing has happened yet. Don't worry. We've just started this story. So you haven't missed much at all. All right. Yes, Garima, please put down that idiom in the comments. Sachi, you're absolutely right. Don't worry. I saw you put the word headstrong down a gazillion times. Okay, so this was, this child is making a very mean rap about Elsie Brook, who is a useless cook. Because instead of making fish and chips, she made shepherd's pie. And he says this food might kill you. So he is exaggerating pretty much. It wasn't true, obviously. It was a fabricated, concocted, erroneous Aryan, rap. This wasn't true. Mrs. Brooke did good school dinners, but the rap caught on and a long snake of chanting children wound its way above the playground with Sammy at its head. So Sammy is, is at the head of this, of this line and all the children, so this is just a representation of what they might have looked like. So all the children were standing in line like this and they were rapping about Elsie Brooke, the useless cook. So they were going, Elsie Brooke is a useless cook. If you eat school dinners, it's your hard luck. They either kill or make you ill of the meat. Don't do without the custard will. They're making fun of Elsie Brooke. Jane didn't join in. So Jane being the more sensible, sagacious, prudent sibling doesn't join in. She thought it was stupid 
and hope Mrs. Brooke wouldn't hear it. So she said, no, this is a nonsensical, foolish, doltish thing to do to make such a mean rap. And she's hoping that Mrs. Brooke won't hear such a mean rap. On Saturday, Sammy practiced the rap with some of his friends. He's again going, Elsie Brooke is a useless cop. So he's going on and on. They meant to get it going again at break on Monday. So they were hoping again on Monday, they're going to bully the cook by, by singing this rap. But at the end of the morning assembly, the head teacher said, so their, their headmaster told them, with a heavy heart, I have to tell you that our Mrs. Brooke has taken ill over the weekend and will not be here to cook for us this week. So the head teacher, the headmaster said that, you know, look, with a heavy heart, with a lot of grief and sadness, I have to tell you that Mrs. Brooke, our cook, is under the weather and she won't be here to cook for us. Hi, Harshal. Welcome. All right. Some of the boys grinned and nudged one another. So the boys said, oh, thank God she's not come. Elsie Brooke is a useless cook and she's not come to cook for us. Okay. No problem, Harshal. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Shlok, so kind of you. Okay. So the boys were grinning. They said, oh, yes, they were smirking. Then Mrs. Brooke has not come to make shepherd's pie for them. And they nudged one another. They were poking and elbowing one another. They said, thank God she's not come. Sammy whispered in Jane, Jane's ear. She must have eaten some of that shepherd's pie and fallen ill. Jane jabbed him with her elbow. So he was just being mean. He said she ate her disgusting, repulsive looking shepherd's pie and that's why she fell ill. And Jane said, shut up. However, continued the head, we are very lucky to have with us Mr. Hannay, who will see to our meals till Mrs. Brooke returns. Mr. Hannay is not only a first class chef, but an explorer as well. He has travelled as cook on a number of ex expeditions to remote regions and he is famous for his ability to produce appetising meals from the most unpromising ingredients. All right. So the head tells them that, look, we don't have Mrs. Brooke this week, but Mr. Hannay has come. And Mr. Hannay is a first class chef. He's not just a cook. He is a professional chef. Wow. And not only that, he's also an explorer. He's a traveler. So he has traveled all around the world. He's a globe trotter. He's gone all around the world and he has learned a plethora of recipes. So he has traveled as a cook on a number of expeditions, on a number of these excursions and escapades. He's gone on these adventures to remote regions, to faraway places. And what he can do is he can make the most appetizing, mouth-watering some meals from the most unpromising ingredients. So sometimes the ingredients might not be very good, but Mr. Hane is so talented that he can make the most appetizing food with the most unfavorable ingredients. So yes, he'll feel at home here then, muttered Sammy. We have the most unpromising ingredients in Europe. So Sammy says, oh, he'll be very comfortable here because we have such horrible ingredients here in Europe. That, that our cook only makes shepherd's pie for us. Let's see what he makes. A chef though. A first class chef. So the children are excited. They're thrilled. Because they're going to eat a professional chef's food. Morning lessons seem to drag on forever. So their lessons were going on at a snail's pace. Everything was creeping along. And it felt like 3 o'clock when the buzzer went. Though it was 5 to 12 as always. So there were 5 minutes left for 12 noon. But it felt like three o'clock because they were so excited to sample the chef's food. Hands were washed in two seconds flat. Right. So they washed their hands in a jiffy, in a moment, in the blink of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye. All those words you already know. Vasansha, thank you so much. You've put down all the synonyms for mouth-watering, scrumptious, lip-smacking, delectable, palatable. Good job, brainy brats. So pink mischief. Sorry, sweetie, I don't know your name. You want to see the wrap again, I believe. So I'll just quickly show you the wrap before I continue. It goes, Elsie Brooke is a useless cook. If you eat school dinners, it's your hard luck. They either kill or make you ill if the meat don't do within the custard will. All right, so there you go. So now let's go back to Mr. Hannay's food, the new cook, the new chef. So everyone is so excited. They wash their hands in the twinkling of an eye. 
and everybody hurried along to the dining area, which was filled with a delicious mouth-watering aroma. So that dining area was bathed in this amazing aroma. Ah, snowy cloths covered all the tables and on each table stood a little pot of flowers. So even the presentation was absolutely amazing. Right? So it looked like this. So there were these white tablecloths. Right, Ahana. Pink mischief is Ahana. Sorry, Ahana. Okay. So uh, there were white tablecloths and all the school tables and even flowers on the table. Right? So this was amazing. The presentation was impeccable. Right? And it was, and let's see if Mr. Hane is indeed a first class chef. All right. So, yes. Wow breathed Jeanette Fraser. So one of the girls, Jeanette Fraser, goes, wow, it's like a posh restaurant. She's saying our school, our, our ordinary school, our nondescript school has been transformed into this fashionable, plush, swanky, luxurious restaurant with just these few touches. And the food. Oh, the food. First came a thick, fragrant soup which was green, but tasted absolutely fantastic. To follow the soup, there was a beautiful main course, succulent nuggets of tender white meat in a golden spicy sauce with baby peas and crispy roast potatoes. And for the pudding, there was giant helpings of chocolate ice cream with crunchy bits in it. So there was this aromatic soup. Let's look at the food. First, there was this green soup, right? And it was quite aromatic. Then there was this amazing main course. So there, were, there, was, there was this succulent, juicy, tender meat with crunchy roast potatoes and fresh peas. Mm. And then there was also chocolate ice cream with little crunchy bits in it. Gosh, this has really whetted my appetite. I wish I had a snack. So it is, it is such a decadent, indulgent meal. Wow. So it's obvious that Mr. Hane is an expert when it comes to food, right? He's a connoisseur of food. A connoisseur is an expert, right? So if you're a connoisseur of anything, you're an, you're an expert in that particular thing. So if you're, a, say, you know wine very well, so you're a connoisseur of wine. If you maybe collect rare books and you know everything about books, you're a connoisseur of books. So Mr. Hane seems to be a connoisseur of food. Yes, Swara, you're absolutely right. The children are gourmets. Okay. Sammy lipped the last smear of ice cream mm, from his spoon, dropped the spoon in his dish, pushed the dish away and bit. <laughs> Some of the boys giggled, but his sister glared at him. She said, stop it. What terrible manners. Sammy smiled. Sorry, but what a meal. Eh? What a stupendous pig out. I'll probably nod off in biology this afternoon. So he was, he was so satiated, so satisfied at the end of the meal that he pushed his dish away and he bopped. He brought up wind. And uh, everyone was giggling, but his sister glared at him. She said, ah, such bad behavior. She glowered at him. She stared angrily at him. And Sammy said, oh, this was an amazing meal. What a phenomenal meal, right? It was a pig out. It was a feast. And, you know, we really gorged on this amazing, indulgent meal. And he's saying, I'm so full. I might, I might go to sleep in biology. I might nod off like this because of how full I am. He didn't though. He didn't go to sleep in biology. Let's find out why. Miss Corbishley did not give him the chance. So the biology teacher was called Miss Corbishley. The class was doing pond life. So what they were studying that day was marine life. They were, they were studying fish, right? And, uh, and when they walked in the room, the teacher said, Jane and Sammy Troy, take the net and the specimen jar. Go down to the pond and bring back some pond beetles and a water boatman or two. Quickly now. So they're doing practical biology, right? They're doing practicals. They're actually going to see this marine life. So the teacher tells them, 
you take this specimen jar, this biology specimen jar that looks like this. Can you see this? And this fishing net. So she says, take two of these things and you go down to the school pond. And from the school pond, I want you to bring me pond beetles. She wants a couple of specimens. I'll show you what pond beetles look like. They're disgusting. Sorry about this. So this is a pond beetle, a water beetle. And this is another kind of an insect called a water boatman. So she says, I want a pond beetle and I want a water boatman. So get me two of these, all right, in this specimen jar because they're doing practical biology. The school pond lay beyond the playing field. So they had this playing field, right, their grounds. And the school pond was beyond that. Rushes grew thickly round its marshy rim and there were tadpoles, newts and dragonflies as well as the beetles they would, they would study today. So generally, you know, so this particular pond, there were these waterside plants that grew around its, the marshy area, the muddy area. And this place had a variety of species, a plethora of species. So there were tadpoles, I'll show you a couple of pictures. So there were tadpoles. So tadpoles grow into frogs or toads. You know, this. So there were tadpoles. This is a newt, right? So if you've um, watched Matilda, there's a prank with a newt in Matilda. So that's a newt. And um, there were dragonflies and there were beetles, the water boatmen. And there were water beetles and all of these. So, um, yeah, generally this place had a variety of species. It was Sammy's favorite spot. So Sammy loved this place because of those species. But today, all the creatures seemed to be hiding. He couldn't see a single creature. No dragonflies darted away as the twins waded through the reeds. So the twins were walking through the water. When you're wading, you're walking with effort through water. So the water level was very low. They were walking through the water. And they didn't see any dragonflies darting away, rushing away. No sticklebacks scattered like silver pins when Jane trawled the net through the pond weed. And when she lifted it out, it was empty. So there were no fish also in the pond. So generally, this pond had sticklebacks. So stickleback is a type of fish, I'll show you. So there were no sticklebacks even. These silver sticklebacks, they were not there in the pond when Jane dragged the, the net, she trawled the net through the pond. Nothing came in the net, right? So it was empty. Try again, said Sammy, faster. He said, come on, why aren't we getting any of these biology creatures? Or creatures for our biology practicals, rather. Jane sent the net swooping through the underwater forest. So she puts the net even lower, where there are all these weeds, there are these wild underwater plants. But all she got was a plume of weed. Only a mass of underwater plants came out. All right. So let's continue now. Everything seems to have gone, she said. And Miss Corbishley is waiting. Hi, Pavani and Shravani. Um, have you just entered? And I'm so sorry. You didn't, you didn't miss too much. They've just had a wonderful meal at school. And now they have biology class, these two, these two children, um, Jane and Sammy. So you haven't missed too much. And you're asking me if the live is going to happen on YouTube every time. We're going to see how this one goes and we'll let you know. All right, let's continue. So, um, so Jane says, look, we can't find any of these creatures. And our biology teacher, Miss Corbishley, is waiting for us. I know, said Sammy. We think we're purposely missing school. So Sammy says that she'll think we're bunking school if we spend any more time here. Don't be ridiculous, cried Miss Corbishley when Jane told her there was nothing in the pond. So Sam and Jane go back and they tell Miss Corbishley, look, we couldn't find any of these creatures. And Miss Corbishley says, you're being absurd. This is insane. This is preposterous. It's ludicrous. How can there be no creatures in the pond? Only this morning, the chef, Mr. Hannay, was telling me what a well-stocked pond we have in Milton Middle. He said, wow, we have such a well-supplied pond, lovely pond, so many creatures. The twins were sent to their seats in disgrace. So she said, come on, go back, sit in your seats. And the, the children were ashamed. They were humiliated, right? 
while Jeanette Fraser and Mary Bain went to try their luck. So two other girls went to try and get these creatures. Miss Corbishley made a giant drawing of a water boatman on the board and the children began copying it into the books. So while they were waiting for these creatures to come, they were drawing this water boatman in their books. Hey Jane, hissed Sammy. Hey Jane, he's whispering. His sister looked at him. What? Sammy had a funny look on his face, a very peculiar, bizarre look. He just had a thought. So, so she said, yes, tell me. So she, he replied, you know what Miss said about Mr. Hane? She said, Miss Corbishley said something about Mr. Hane. So Jane said, what about it? So Sam says, he said the pond was well stocked, right? And now it isn't. We couldn't find any of those creatures. And we had that fantastic meal. Only we didn't know what it was. What's dinner got to do with the pond? Jane gazed at her brother. She stared at her brother. She said, what, what, what do these pond creatures have to do with, with our, 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 our meal, right? She shook her head. She said, no. No, Sammy. No, that's sick. It's impossible. So a lot of you are saying that maybe the chef has used insects in the food. And yes, Sammy's come to the same conclusion. But Jane is saying, look, no, 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 no. This cannot be possible. Is it? Sammy jabbed a finger at her. He poked her. What was that soup then? Green soup. What was in that green soup, huh? Toads? Frogs? And the meat. What was that meat? Was it the fish? And those crunchy bits in the ice cream? Did he grind beetles and put it into the ice cream? What were they? Before Jane could reply, Jeanette and Mary came back with long faces and an empty jar. So remember, two other girls had gone from their class down to the school pond, but they came back with long faces, with unhappy, disappointed expressions. And their jar, their specimen jar, was empty. Okay, let's, let's go back and look at that food once again. It looked quite palatable, quite scrumptious. We were going, mmm, yum, wow. Let's look at it again. What's in this? What is that meat? And what are the cr those crunchy bits in the ice cream? Are those chocolate chips or beetle bits? Let me know in the comments what you think they are. Okay. The soup was orange. So now for the next meal, they're going for their next meal for lunch. And um, and Jane tells Sammy, look, what you were thinking about, it was a coincidence. And it can't be what you were thinking. It's, it's just, it's just something, it's just two things that have happened simultaneously that we aren't getting those creatures in the pond. And, um, and you know, the, 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 the meal was fantastic. They're unrelated. It's a coincidence. But Sammy was not reassured. He wasn't satisfied, right? And now they've gone for Tuesday's meal. And the twins have kept their suspicions, their feeling, their speculations to themselves. So there were no spoiled appetites. A lot of you are saying they were beetle bits. <laughs> All right. Okay. So they didn't tell anybody. Jane and Sammy did not tell anybody that, look, you know, maybe the chef has put beetle bits in the ice cream. All right. So um, the children settled down to eat. And even Jane and Sammy, they thought, okay, that's a coincidence. And... Now, this time, the soup was orange and there were no lumps in it. So, the soup maybe looks like carrot soup. Let's look at this. So, the soup this time is orange, no, no lumps. And uh, it had plenty of flavor though. It was very flavorsome. Mm, amazing. And everybody enjoyed it. The main course was Italian. Mounds of steaming pasta and a rich meaty tomato sauce. Right, so there were mounds of pasta that looked like this. Heaps of pasta. Mm, and a rich meaty sauce. So they could taste the meat in the sauce. It was it was amazing, right? And absolutely juicy, the pasta. If this is how they eat in Italy, said Sammy, I'm off to live there. So Sammy is gorging himself on the food. He's devouring this food because they think it's a coincidence, probably. He seemed to have forgotten about Monday, what happened the previous day. 
Jane had it. Jane hadn't forgotten, but she knew macaroni when she saw it. And this was definitely macaroni. Let's look at the picture again. Now, this is obviously macaroni, right? And uh, you can't make macaroni out of beetle bits and fish and toads and sticklebacks and water boatmen and water beetles and what have you, right? So she says, this is macaroni. It can't be anything else. So that afternoon, they had CDT with Mr. Parker. So in Europe, they have this uh, subject called CDT, which is craft design and technology, CDT. So it's basically arts and crafts, right? So when the kids arrived, Mr. Parker was kneeling in front of his big cupboard, surrounded by a mountain of dusty old drawings and broken models made from cardboard boxes. So he's pulled out all these old craft items, old drawings, broken models. Yes. So Sammy asked him, did you lose something, sir, Mr. Parker? Mr. Parker nodded. I'm, I, I'm afraid I have, lad. I could have sworn they were in here. So Mr. Parker says, I, I think I've lost my things that were here and they were here in my in my cupboard. What, sir? Some pictures I did with the first year class three or maybe four years ago. So he said, I did this with the first year class, with a first standard class three or four years ago. And there were these collage pictures. So Sammy said, all right, sir, could you tell me what they look like? So he said, you know what a collage is? You stick things on a sheet of paper to make a picture. You you stick seashells, um, lentils, which, which are pulses, bits of macaroni, any old rubbish you can find. So he's saying all this is missing. These old drawings, these old collage, collage uh, drawings that I made with uh, this first tier class, right? Collage pictures. And we had stuck all these things and all those things are missing. Sammy got... You had stuck bits of macaroni, sir? That's right. Four years ago? Yes. I'm sure I saw them at the back of the cupboard quite recently and made a mental note to clear them out before the mice got to them. So he's saying, yes, I, I had thought to myself, I made a mental note to myself that I have to clear those out before the mice got here and started feeding on the, the, the macaroni and the lentils for, from four years ago. Are there mice in your cupboard, sir? There was a greenish tint to Sammy's face. What did Mr. Hannay give them for the meal? Macaroni. And what was missing? Four-year-old uncooked macaroni that was stuck to a sheet. Eh. That is disgusting. It's repulsive. It's repugnant. Okay, absolutely revolting. So Sammy looks sick. He looks green around the gills. He looks like he's about to puke. He looks like he's about to vomit. Mr. Parker replied, Oh, yes, lad, mice, moths, cockroaches. He said, you find everything in this cupboard. You know, there are mice, there are moths. There are cockroaches. The odd rat, probably. It's a miniature zoo, this cupboard. He said, there are all kinds of creatures in this old cupboard. Sammy didn't enjoy craft design and technology that afternoon. He couldn't concentrate. He kept picturing Mr. Hannay in his blue and white striped apron rooting through Parker's cupboard. So he could, he, he could imagine the chef wearing his apron and going through the cupboard, you know, looking at, looking for the macaroni, rummaging through the cupboard for the old macaroni. <laughs> when he glanced across at Jane, so Sammy looked at his twin, he thought she looked unwell, even she looked sick. He wondered how Mrs. Brooke was getting along. And when the boys did the rap at the break, he didn't join in. So now Sammy, who made that terrible rap, Elsie Brooke is a useless cook, that rap. He's missing Mrs. Brooke. He's wondering how she is, whether she's getting better. And when the other boys are singing the rap in break time, he doesn't join in because he's missing Mrs. Brooke. Okay, on Wednesday, so it's the third day, Wednesday, Jane and Sammy decided that they wouldn't eat school lunch unless they knew what it was. They told themselves, look, we're not going to eat it. Sammy said, how do we find out what it is? We ask, Jane told him. At 11 o'clock, she stuck her hand up 
and asked to go to the toilet but went to the kitchen instead. So she asked the teacher, ma'am, may I answer the call of nature? May I use the washroom? But instead she headed to the kitchen. Mr. Hanney wasn't there, but Mrs. Trafford was. Another lady, another teacher, Mrs. Trafford had come to the kitchen. Where's Mr. Hanney? Asked Jane. So Jane, you know, asked, where is he? I want to ask him what's for, what's for lunch today. She hoped he'd left. She was hoping that Mr. Hanney had left the school. But Mrs. Trafford said, he's just gone to the school gym, dear. Why? Who wants him? Oh, nobody, said Jane. I was wondering what's for lunch, that's all. Opec, said Mrs. Trafford. Pardon, said Jane. Opec, it's a very ancient dish, Mr. Hanny says. Very nice. So Mrs. Trafford told Jane that Mr. Hanny is at the school gym and he's making something called Opec, which is an ancient dish, a very old a, a recipe that has come from ancient times. And the name of this, this dish is O-P-E-K, OPEC. All right. Now, OPEC turned out to be a grey porridge mush, a soft, wet grey porridge that looked like this. So, OPEC looked like this. Not really appetizing, right? So, this was OPEC. It didn't look all that promising, but it was probably what ancient food was supposed to look like and it tasted fine. So, they... They tasted it. It's porridge, okay, ancient food. Everybody was enjoying it till Gaz Walker fished a small rectangular object from his plate and held it up. So Gaz Walker pulled out something from his plate, a small rectangular object. He said, here, he complained, why is there a size 4 tag in my dinner? So there's a tag in my food, a size 4 tag. Right? And it looked like the sort of a tag that you would find inside a shoe. Size 4. OPEC, Jane murmured. Jane is wondering, what is this OPEC? And then she thinks, she's wondering, why was Mr. Hane in the school gym at 11 a.m. when he was supposed to be cooking? She said, OPEC, OPEC, what's OPEC? An idea formed in her head. And sank slowly into her stomach. She thought of something. And she felt a gurgling sound in her stomach. She put the tag on her plate. And sat back with her hands on her stomach like this. All around the table. The kids stopped eating and they watched her. Everybody was watching and saying, What's happening, Jean? Why do you look like that? What's up, Jean? Sammy's voice was husky. So her twin Sammy, his voice was croaky. It was harsh. What's up? Opec, whispered Jane. I think I know what it means. What does it mean? Asked Jeanette, who had almost eaten everything on her plate. So Jeanette had almost finished everything on her plate. So she said, what does Opec mean? Tell us. I think it's initials. It stands for old P.E. kit, old physical education kit, O.P.E.K, old physical education kit. So Mr. Hanny has just taken disgusting things from a physical education kit, some shoes, some stinky socks, some sweaty t-shirts, mixed it all up and made us eat it. <laughs> The peace of the dining area was shattered by cries of revulsion and the scrape and clatter of chairs as everybody on Jane's table stampeded for the door. So everyone was, every, was very silent. So the peace in the dining room was shattered. It was pierced by cries of revulsion. Everybody's revolted. They're saying, ew, ew, yeah, what did we just eat? And the scrape and clatter of chairs. So everybody's you know, scraping and, and, and throwing their chairs around as they stampeded for the door. So they bolted and dashed for the door. So these were only the children at Jane's table, the 10 children at Jane's table. The kids at the other tables went on eating the OPEC. So they didn't know it was all P.E. kit. Sometimes two people can keep a secret, but never 10. 
So 10 people can't keep a secret. So the secret came out. All the children knew about it. The next day, which is Thursday, everybody brought sandwiches. They didn't want to eat whatever Mr. Hani was giving them. Stuff from the, the, the pond or uh, the old PE kit or things from the CDT cupboard, the craft design technology cupboard. Yuck! So, but ev so the next day, everyone brought sandwiches. But they needn't have because Hannah had gone and Mrs. Brooke was back. Right, so they are all excited the very next day because Mr. Hane was making these disgusting, revolting, repugnant meals had gone. And Mrs. Brooke was back. And when they spotted her crossing the playground at five to nine, so that when they saw her crossing the playground at five minutes to nine, the kids cheered and said, Yeah, Mrs. Elsie Brooke, you're an awesome cook. Elsie Brooke is an awesome cook. So they changed the rap as well. From L.C. Brooke is a useless cook. They made it. L.C. Brooke is an awesome cook. So Mrs. Brooke was a sentimental type. She was very emotional, very misty-eyed. She wiped her eyes. She said, oh my God, the children love me. They're so happy to see me. So the kids chucked their sandwiches in the bin. They said, we brought these sandwiches, but we don't need them. We're going to eat Mrs. Brooke's food. So dinner wasn't fish and chips, but there were no complaints. So they didn't get fish and chips, but it was okay. At least they weren't eating stuff from the pond. Everybody tucked in with gusto. Everybody's eating with enthusiasm. Even Sammy. The snowy cloths had gone and there were no flowers. But there was something else instead. Contentment. You could feel it all around. So there, there wasn't this beautiful, fancy, posh presentation which Mr. Hane had with the white tablecloths and the flowers. But everybody was satisfied. They were contented. Right? And so the school week drew to a close. So the next day, it was Friday. Everybody relaxed. The work was done. The weekend bright with promise lay ahead. They were all excited for the weekend. At half past three, so this was on Friday, at half past three, 3.30 that is, the kids walked into the yard, right? So they were saying, Woo! School is over! Time for the weekend to enjoy! So Jane and Sammy strolled behind. So they were walking in a relaxed way. They weren't running about. At the top of the drive stood the gardener looking lost. So the school gardener was looking puzzled. He looked confused. He looked perplexed, bewildered. Sammy grinned. What's up, Mr. Tench? The gardener's name is Mr. Tench. The gardener lifted his cap and scratched his head. He said, there was a nice pile of fresh horse manure here this morning and it's gone. He said, just this morning, there was fresh horse dung, animal dung, animal poop. And now it's gone and I was going to use it for gardening. The twins exchanged glances. Sammy and Jane are wondering, where did this go? Where did the horse manure go? Where did it disappear? Mrs. Brooke was coming down the drive. They ran to us. They went to speak to the cook, Mrs. Brooke. Mrs. Brooke, cried Sammy. That Mr. Hane, he has left, hasn't he? So Sammy says, Mr. Hane, who makes this disgusting stuff, he's left, right? So the cook nodded. She said, yes, yes, he's left. Don't worry. I'm afraid he has. But don't worry. He left me his recipe book. And you know, it's just amazing the meals you can get out of stuff you find lying around. So Mrs. Brooks says, Mr. Hanny is gone, don't worry. But he left me his amazing, phenomenal, stupendous recipe book. And now I'm making food from that recipe book. And you can make food with anything lying around. Wow. <laughs> so children, my question to you is, do you think Miss Brooks actually used horse manure in the in the food did she actually use horse manure in the food or were the children letting their imagination run wild were the children just imagining things let me know in the comments and tell me why that's very important according to me miss brooks actually used horse manure in the food because she was following mr hannay's recipes to a t right so let me know what you think. And the winners from last week are um, Shuchi Kapadia and Ananya Kanodia. 
Each of you will get 15 stars for that amazing answer. So children, put down a few sentences about what you think happens next. Did Mrs. Brooks put horse manure in the food or were the children imagining, imagining it? And why? Most importantly, put down why you think so. So children, I hope you enjoyed this live session. Again, I'm so sorry about the technical issues we faced. But thank you so much for your patience. It paid off, as you can see clearly. I think this was a wonderful session. I can't wait for our next live session. However, we don't have one next week. Next Sunday is a holiday. But I hope you enjoy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. And to celebrate, do watch the Brainy Brats Love Masterclass on our YouTube channel. And children, don't forget to like, subscribe, share the videos, hit the bell button, do all of that. Love all of you. See you soon. Bye-bye.